the Coaster Craze here, and today I'll be finally releasing my top 10 roller coasters that I've been on. I'd just like to add that all photos and videos are mine unless otherwise noted. Starting off my list, at the number 10 spot, I have the Intamin 2005 Launch Coaster, King the Cop, the tallest and second fastest roller coaster in the world. So, this is a coaster that some people don't like too much because of the roughness. And yes, I did ride it back row, so I did get a lot of the shakiness during the launch. But it wasn't like dizzying or uncomfortable, it was just more like out of control feeling. It was kind of cool. This is a very intense coaster with a tiny bit of airtime at the top and a good amount of airtime during that first hill. And this launch is just amazing, the hype is awesome. This is just really a really awesome roller coaster. And yes, it doesn't have the length to make it get higher on this list or the variety of elements, but it's still an awesome rush. Coming in at number nine, I have Fahrenheit at Hershey Park. This 2008 roller coaster is a mix between a Gerslau Eurofighter and an Intamin Blitz. It's really awesome. So the vertical lift till that was my first one I've ever been on, and it was very daunting. It's really creepy. The beyond vertical drop is really fun, not super intense. The Norwegian loop, that double inversion that you're seeing right now, that's super awesome. It's the only one in the US. And there's just a bunch of good inversions. I found them, like, the overall it's a slightly shaky coaster, but it's not too bad. The Cobra roll is pretty fun. I like the core screws, they give good hang time. And then there's just one airtime hill at the end that gives insane ejector. And I was just, I was so surprised because this is mostly for inversions. And then all of a sudden I just got thrown out of my seat right here on this hill. And you're slamming to the brakes and overall, this is an intense coaster with a, a plenty of variety of elements. So Storm Runner is an intimate accelerator coaster and features a top hat and a launch to start off the ride. But it expands the layout and has other stuff, which makes it come higher than King the Cop on my list. So it's almost like a mix between a blitz and an accelerator. It's got this awesome, powerful launch. And then it has this great top hat, which actually has some airtime at the top. And then you got this like steep drop that's like straight down. And then it feels like it keeps on going because it goes down to a ravine, which is really cool. And it has these great inversions that are really high up in the air and give you great hang time. Like, And they're really unique, like the flying snake dive and all that. And then there's just some awesome like twists at the end, like the Intamin's twistiness. That's really fun. And overall, this coaster, even though it's pretty short, it produces a ton of elements in this short time. And it is just an excellent, really fun roller coaster. At number 7, I have Goliath, located at Six Flags Over Georgia. So first off, all credit to this video goes to Coaster Force. I did not film this video, as you can see in the watermark in the bottom left hand corner. So this is a very small hyper coaster, and lots of people really like it a lot. But honestly, I was extremely underwhelmed. I had just ran Nitro a month before for the first time, and when I went on this, I just found that I had a, a little bit of a rattle, and I could definitely feel it. I rode it back row and I got some airtime and I got some pretty decent floater but not great and definitely no ejector on the ending bunny hops and the drop just felt kind of small and the speed just wasn't as there. It just kind of felt like a lesser version of Nitro and I mean maybe I just rode it on a bad day. I only could get one ride on it because I had to do like because I only had like a couple hours at the park and so I guess that's there's that but it just did not feel as good as I would have hoped, but overall it still has great height and speed and it delivers some pretty good floater air. Of all the roller coasters on this list, I've ridden Superman the far most. It's at my home park, Six Flags America, and I've ridden it nine times now and I have a really good feel for it. It is an epic ride and super underrated, definitely the most underrated coaster on this list. So you start out with this like pretty quick climb up 200 feet. This ride is huge compared to the rest of the park. I mean, now they have Wonder Woman, but you still get an amazing view. And it really goes like out into the wilderness, which is kind of cool because Six Flags America has a lot of land. So it has all this like forest area and it's like very secluded in the back half of the ride. So you have this really good drop. You don't really feel it in the front, but you feel it in the back and you just get whipped over tons of airtime on the drop in the back. And then you just have this insane sense of speed, especially in the front. And you go into this first hill, which is a great floater hill. And then you have these 
great helixes, which aren't like too intense, but they do provide a great sense of speed and have, do have some intensity. And then you get an ejector hill, some more helixes, and this series of three ejector hills at the end that give insane airtime, especially in the back. They give insane whipping up and then stuff, and then just slams into a break run. And overall, there's four great ejector hills and one great floater hill, and an awesome drop and cool helixes. So it's a very unique coaster with its like straight section that gives like a sense of speed, and I really like it. The only reason that's not coming in higher is because <clears throat> some of these later coasters have like just more variety of elements and more like airtime hills and stuff like that. But this is an awesome ride, and I highly recommend going to Six Flags America to ride it. Even though Superman gives a significantly longer ride, Skyrush gives a lot more intense ride. It's a very short coaster, which is the main drawback, but it packs in a lot. It has large height, it has super fast speed, and it has tons of elements. So the first drop, I rode in the back row, once in the wing seat, once in the regular seat, and you get flung over, a lot of stomach up feeling. Then you have this turn, which gives this insane like hang time feeling like sideways, it's on this really pretty setting, like, around this lake, as you can see. And it has all these insane turns that, like, one time I even grayed out on it after the drop because you go into this turn. And then it has, I think, like, two or three insane ejector hills. Like, it's just so much to process in such a short time that, like, I can't even, like, remember all the elements. Like, it's it's a way more intense ride than Superman. And, like, if this was just a little bit longer, it would be even higher up on this list. But overall... It's just an amazing and super intense and eventful coaster. At number four, I have Nitro, my favorite hyper coaster and the oldest coaster on this list. So this roller coaster is amazing. It delivers a long ride with a lot of elements and a ton of airtime. So this is not an ejector coaster, but this has the most floated airtime and probably the most airtime on any coaster I've ever been on. That first drop is stunning. It's amazing. It has a really fast speed going like 80 miles per hour. That first airtime, it like twists you and there's like sideways airtime. Then you have the hammerhead, which is awesome. I actually grid out once on the upward helix. That's a really intense element. Then it has the bunny hills at the end that give great floater and almost like ejector airtime. And overall, this has like five or six airtime hills that are all really good and really solid. And this is just an insanely butter smooth ride that is very re-rideable and just super, super fun. So for the longest time, I liked Nitro better than El Toro. But recently I got to ride El Toro two more times this year, once in the back row, and that completely changed everything. This coaster is so amazing. It has the best ejector I've ever been on. Every hill is just so powerful, especially that the last hill, right before all those crazy like bank turns, th that one just fl makes you fly out of your seat. It's a super intense ride. It has a little bit of that one coaster roughness, but it doesn't like hurt your head. Just like it, so it's like pretty smooth, you know. And it's a, it's a very re rideable. And the drop that is the best drop I've ever been on for a roller coaster. You get flung over. You get so much like stomach up feeling. Um, it just insane. Especially, like, it feels like there's, like, so much head choppers, especially on that drop. So, like, when you're getting to the bottom of it, you feel like it's never-ending. And it's so awesome. The back row is by far the best row to ride this coaster. And it is by far my favorite one coaster. So, that's why it's coming in at the number three spot. To date, this is the only RMC I've been on. And, wow, this left a great first impression. So, you dr come out of the station... And you can really tell it's a really smooth ride and give some great airtime with those little bunny hops. <clears throat> then you go into the lift hill and there's this incredibly steep like turn drop that almost feels beyond vertical. It's a really cool feeling. And then you have these crazy airtime hills that give great ejector. Then it goes up into that high five element. Sadly, I did not go when it was dueling. I only got one ride on it. I did not have much time at Magic Mountain. But... I'm sure if it was doing it, I'd like it that much better. It, But it was just so awesome, that high five element. Even without the other train, it just delivered great hang time. And then the two inversions. The first one on the blue side, that corkscrew, was pretty fun. But the green side, that Top Gun stall was amazing. That's my today my favorite inversion I've been on. The hang time was insane. 
and there's a great double down in there. It's a really long ride. Some don't like that. It kills the momentum technically because of that second lift hill. But I thought it just delivers a great ride and just feels like you're getting like double the fun. And I honestly love it as inversions, banks, drops, airtime. What's not to love? Before I reveal my number one roller coaster of all time, I have some honorable mentions I'd like to share. There's so much to say about this coaster. It is so amazing. Yes, it is pretty short, partially because you're traveling at 90 miles per hour, but this is by far the most exhilarating roller coaster I've ever been on, and possibly the most exhilarating on the planet. The main pro here with this coaster is intensity. Many say it's the most intense roller coaster in the world, and it is so awesome because of that. I love intensity, and after that first drop, that turn, you gray out a little. I gray out once. I went front row the first time and towards the back the second time. The second time I grayed out, I thought that ride was a lot better. So at that first ride, I went front row. And that was that was really fun. But I wasn't sure if it was my number one. I kind of still like Twisted Classes better. But then I rode in the back row. And this is where I was so in love with this coaster. So you crest over that drop and you get flung over. There's so much negative Gs on that drop when you're towards the back. The, there's two airtime hills. The first one's floater and the second's this great ejector hill. And that ejector hill is so much better in the back. Then, of course, there's the first turn after the drop where you gray out. I didn't gray out in the front and I actually kind of enjoyed this gray out in the back because it was just so fast and just so amazing. These turns are so rapid fire. There's some other coasters I've been on with intimate twistiness like Storm Runner, Sky Rush, but this does it by far the best, which is rapid fire back to back turns in like two different ways at once. And it's just, there's no other experience like it on the planet. And that's why this is my number one roller coaster. So I'll be going to Florida very soon, actually this week. And so I'm hoping my top 10 will change a little, but I'll do my top 10 at the end of next summer. And maybe I'll get to go on some more rides until then. So I'd also like to say that for this next week, I will not be bringing my computer to Florida. So I'll only be posting vlogs from the parks that I go to on this channel. And then I'll get back and do a bunch of new content and stuff with the footage and photos I took. So see you guys later from the Coaster Craze. I hope you enjoyed this list and bye.